Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Friday morning's devotion, and uh, we're just winding up on the issue of metaphors. We've chosen a couple of them, as we have found them, as Jesus has spoken them in the Scripture. There are plenty more, and from time to time we may just visit one or two of them again. But I do want to start something fresh next week. But uh, today I want to complete the, the idea of Jesus using the metaphor of him being the bread of life. And we've spoken much about the sustaining power of this bread of God and, and the inclusivity that everybody's included. But I just want to remind you today, as we close this week, of the incredible exclusivity of our desire. And we find the answer to that exclusive desire only in Christ. You know, at the end of the conversation with uh, the disciples, after many had left because they didn't understand and they couldn't bear the thought of what Jesus was teaching them about, many left from following him that day. That's okay because Jesus knew that they would learn and they would probably think about it along the way. And some rejected him because this was not a teaching that was pleasing for them to hear. But he had a conversation with his disciples that kind of clinched the deals. And he said to his disciples, he said, guys, it looks like a lot of people have left us. Are you guys going to leave me as well? And Peter came up with this. He said, Jesus, where will we go? We cannot go anywhere because you have the words of eternal life. You are the answer to our exclusive desire. We may not have all the answers to the things around us and to life and the problems and the challenges and the issues and the joys and all that kind of stuff of life. But Jesus, one thing we know is that you are the heart answer to my heart's cry. You are an exclusive desire. Now, the interesting thing about this exclusive desire, let me paint a silly picture for you. Imagine if you went into a restaurant one night and uh, you were so hungry, you had eaten nothing all day and you were, you were beside yourself with hunger and you sat down at a table. Restaurant is empty and you think, man, I'm going to get quick service here because no one else is here. And you sit at your table and the waitress comes along and she says, good evening, sir. Can I, can I interest you with some good music? And so she goes in, she turns on the good music. What about a good conversation? So would you like for me to just chat with you a little bit? And, and how's your day been? And you're getting more and more anxious as you get more and more hungry. And then she says, the flowers. I need to get you better flowers than this to put on your table. And you're getting more and more anxious saying, I'm not interested in conversation. I'm not interested in music. I'm not interested in darn flowers. I just want some food. Well, the world will do the same thing to you. The world will offer you substitutes, nice music or a good conversation or something that they hope will distract you from that which is an exclusive desire. Jesus, people, is the only answer. He is the answer to your exclusive desire. But here's the key. In the passage it says, He who comes to me will eat of me and will be totally satisfied. You see, there's a responsibility from our side to come to Jesus. It's our responsibility to respond to his invitation. Don't just sit there today, people, and admire it. Wow, Jesus invited me to be there. No, don't just sit there and contemplate it or study it. You have to take the initiative. And he who comes to Jesus, he's the one who will receive. I had to break the news to you. I can't do that for you. You've got to do it for yourself. You have to come to Jesus. I love the terminology that Jesus uses. It intrigues me. He calls himself bread. You know, how condescending can he be? How low can he go? If he were to say, well, I am the lion and I am the king and I'm, I could get with that. But he calls himself bread. Bread is the staple diet of many people around the world. And Jesus is going so low just to say, I, the son of God, and willing to go as low as declare myself to be a crust of bread so that you are able to receive me. I really hope that you have received Christ, that you have come to him. He says, everyone that comes will eat of me and will never be hungry again. It's an exclusive desire. But it's also, you know, one last thing. This uh, eating of the bread. Um, has for some people been a confusing metaphor. It's not talking about cannibalism. There was a time in history where they thought Jesus was promoting cannibalism. How stupid can you get to think that that's what he might be saying? 
But what he is saying is, I am no longer just with you, but I am in you. I am that close to you that I am part of in you. I will sustain you. I will feed you. I will encourage you. I will be with you because I'm not just with you, around you. I am now in you. Now, as in a word of encouragement today, I've had a week just looking at so many different dilemmas that people face. And I'm so aware of the dilemma of the aged. Those who, or many of them, are lonely. And they're saying, man, I haven't got anybody with me. Well, I may say to you today, you might be lonely, but you're never alone. Because God is always with you. And even though you may sit in quietly at your home, or in your old age place, or wherever you may be, Maybe your health is not so great. I want to say to you senior citizens today, God is so close to you, not just in his presence around you, which we know, but as believers who have eaten of the bread of who Jesus is, he is in you. I don't think you can get any closer than that. I want you to listen as Shelley sings this beautiful song. And I have today, I dedicate this to some of the older folk out there that as you may even sit alone in your home, just reflect on the fact that God is with you because he's in you. How cool is that? Listen as she sings. Have a fantastic week, guys. Weekend. We hope to see you in church, but uh, we'll certainly see you next week. Cheers. Be still and know that I'm with you. Be still. Be still and know that I'm with you. Be still, be still and know. When darkness comes upon you and colors you with fear, Be still and know that I'm with you and I will say your name. If you forget the way to go and lose where you came from, if no Beside you, be still and know I am. Be still and know that I'm with you. Be still and know I am.